Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Luke Shocks, because the headlines keep coming, so I keep on standing up against them. Starting off, the upcoming Harry Potter game Hardworks Legacy is, of course, under fire by activists over them hating J.K. Rowling because it's a day ending in Y. The movie Babylon opened to a $7 million box office in its first weekend while having a $110 million budget. And if you expected the Daily Beast to reflexively defend Margot Robbie as anything other than a box office poison, congratulations, you have a brain. Marvel changed the origin of the Punisher so that it's implied his wife was the one who killed their children so that child-hating death cult feminists can have something new to masturbate to. James Cameron, in a recent interview, claimed that he reduced the use of firearms in Avatar 2 so as to not glorify guns, making him the hypocritical bitch Hollywood director equivalent of, once again, Margot Robbie. A recent X-Men comic featuring toilet and ass humor is now leading to more rumors that the latest brain-dead, shallow, entitled diversity hire writer being brought over by Marvel is actually Amy Schumer. Uh, Glad was publicly outcrying over the upcoming Little Little Mermaid remake not having a progressive, friendly enough casting choices and stories for their groomer, I mean, activist agenda. Disney stock dropped by 44% in value this last year, making it the lowest the stock has been since 1974 due to the economic principle of if you fling shit at the consumer, the consumer will make you eat shit in return. And Henry Cavill is going viral for a 2011 Comic-Con interview with IGN for his movie Immortals, where the reporter mistakenly calls his character the creature named Theseus as a demigod, only for Cavill to mock him for using Wikipedia as a source of information. Unfortunately, the video does not include the next part where he insults the reporter for using CNN as his source of news. Because, well, of course, that shows a little sign of what I like to call consistency. Now, I previously mentioned there you see Margot Robbie about being a hypocritical bitch who wants to cry about how she's a victim when she's never been a victim of anything in her entire life except for her own narcissistic neuroses and terrible career and lifestyle decisions. While James Cameron is the kind of director who built his multi-billion dollar empire on masturbatory uh, gun porn with the Terminator franchise or with True Lies or pretty much every kind of film he goddamn directed, even in damn Titanic, where this historical epic romance goes out of its way to have a chase scene where the Phantom is running after DiCaprio and Kate Winslet with a firearm. And of course, another scene where a man who's actually supposed to be one of the officers is in charge of the Titanic gladly shoots himself in the head as his way of punishing himself for trying to take a bribe in front of a group of people that would also involve women and children. Or Margot Robbie, going back to her, the actress crying about the patriarchy and about how she is going to start her, you know, the dime store, uh, a, a phone, a monkey, and some place in the Cayman Islands style production company to have control over where her career is going to go. I mean, really, it's just a shallow, empty producer's credit where any actual quote unquote producing these projects is done by her little soy bearded, emasculated, ponytail, man bun husband, and some other dorky bitch who is the equivalent to her of what that fat dyke who was an ex Harvey Weinstein assistant who was able to blackmail her way into getting a story department team at Lucasfilm because Kathleen Kennedy can see a kindred spirit. Yep, you're right that. While on the other hand, you've got Henry Cavill, a guy who got his career and now with this building up with the upcoming Warhammer series that he is going to be starring in and producing, unlike the shallow, know-nothing producer credits that Robbie's being thrown at her movies, this is actually being based off of a interest in being consistent with his productions and in actually learning from the Ryan Reynolds-like disasters he's had in the past of his career with the DC Extended Universe And, of course, with the likes of the Witcher franchise, which he came in, and unlike the whiny bitches like Robbie or Johansson who cry about wage gaps when they're making tens of millions a year for monotoning their way through movies where they shake their ass and flaunt their cleavage while crying about being sexualized, yes, you know, Miss Robbie, the great big, I'm going to stand up against the men in Hollywood who want to use me as a puppet, 
Well, yeah, I'm not going to go for the male gaze, but I'm gladly going to go to the premiere for this miserable Babylon movie where my gown for the premiere seemed to be made entirely by stay, stealing a black velvet curtain and wrapping it around my head's tits and cooch, but of course leaving a bit of cleavage and my navel out there for everyone to see while still crying about how I'm standing up for, as my own independent woman. No, you're just being Jessica Alba circa 2006 who cried about being so sexualized when her tits and her ass were the only reason she ever got work in the first place, so you better not be such a two-faced duck a bitch before you wind up getting your career snatched away the second it's even hinted at that you've got a bun in the oven. Much like what happened where the summer that Jessica Alba got her first kid and starred in Love Guru happened to be the summer where Transformers premiered and Megan Fox became the next big brain-dead sex object for Hollywood to glorify when she has about the acting talent of a broken pencil. And of course, her 15 minutes ended on account of her being dumb enough to openly, publicly shit on the director to whom she blew in order to get her career outside of ABC sitcoms and guest appearances on Two and a Half Men in the first place. And look at them and look at their track records. Look at a guy like James Cameron. Look at a dingbat like Margot Robbie, who, on, well, unfortunately for her case, she's probably going to have a longer time being forced in the limelight due to accent exemption. Like all the Game of Thrones actors who were under 30 when the show started that are still getting forced into movie roles where they really don't belong. Whether or not you actually liked seeing them on the show or not, like Amelia Clark, who in everything she's done since the ending of Game of Thrones, comes off like a 17-year-old girl who is doing a bad stage production or starring in some short film that a friend of hers is making with a camcorder. Now we've got Henry Cavill, on the other hand, who is in that statement, in laughing down and not even so much as smiling and laughing in that IGN, of course, is that reporter's face, and even doing a little tisk 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 at him of using Wikipedia as a source of information for this character, this character out of Greek mythology, here's a man who's proving himself to be the right guy for the right job of being involved, even as an actor, in productions where there is some kind of long, beloved lore behind the character. Whether it's the comparatively shorter span of Superman's lore, which was up to 75 years when the release of Man of Steel happened, or playing Theseus in the movie Immortals, where you're talking about the Greek Greek, the Greek, Greek, Greeks, who have their mythology and their history that goes back so damn far along that they knew George Soros when he was about nay high to uh, black money being thrown at judges to illegally remove the sentences of Black Lives Matter thugs who abduct mentally disabled white boys and beat them on camera while screaming, fuck Donald Trump, fuck white people. But there I go with another little truth bomb right there. It's a matter of when you're going into any situation, whether it's a film production, whether it's a what's going to be a new comic book coming out, what's going to be a new TV show, when you're looking at who is involved in the production and what are their statements and what have been their statements before, during or after that production right now, you take a look at a guy like Henry Cavill who going into the very consistently exposed across the social media admiration for Warhammer, for Warhammer 40k, to the point of even tweeting himself, uh, uh, upgrading his own damn desktop, okay, that guy being involved in Warhammer, and also he's getting a producer's credit, well, unlike Margot Robbie, who was just a dingbat who literally was too stupid to know that when you spread your legs for stardom in Hollywood, you don't literally do it on camera, uh, only for all of her, of course, her neurotic issues where a bitch who wants to cry about how she's so above the curve. Well, if that's the case, then why is it that you only ever seem to want to bring your mom to premieres and not your own fucking husband? That, the, as if that doesn't have anything to do with, of course, as usual, Hollywood actively preying on and glorifying and then brainwashing women who grew up without a father, which are much more susceptible than those who grew up with an intact family, because then, then it takes a much more insidious long term amount of corruption and brainwashing them into casting couch prostitution only for then all of that soul eroding behavior to then lead into and collide with when their fame starts to fade and they reach the wrong side of 30 they then become resentful and embittered and desperate so then they'll gladly go and virtue signal via announcing how they have completely alienated jennifer lawrence did from her family for the crime of not voting for uh the president who likes to fear 
seal up 16 year old girls for his own fucking daughter in a shower. But somehow uh, Trump is the bad guy for getting caught on tape, caught on tape, joking about the things that both the Clintons and Obamas and, of course, their prize donors like Mr. Jeffrey Epstein or Harvey Weinstein did with such damn regularity that it was they were more regular at doing that than they were in their damn bowel movements. And you can take that to the damn bank. Yes, take a good look at that. And if you don't think that some kind of daddy issues and self-esteem problems had anything to do with Margot Robbie going from gladly jiggling her titties and making nice little jokes about how she wouldn't do Playboy because I already embarrassed my family enough by being naked and Wolf of Wall Street to after getting slut-shamed by so-called tolerant, open-minded feminists who care for women and want to save them after shaking her ass in Suicide Squad, only for her now to jump into garbage productions like uh, any piece of social justice Oscar Bates has been involved in or Birds of Prey, where an actress who talked about how doing roles that are interesting and respectful and are more than just one type of bland, independent role for women to have when she was doing the Tarzan bomb, only for her to now talk about how and actively lie about how she's always wanted to have Harley Quinn be revolved entirely around the shallow, stupid, artificially generated by a, by those said creepy, woke, child-hating death cultists who masturbate to all kinds of pro-killing kid porn, whether it be the Punisher's origin being revised so that it's a woman who killed the children, or of course them crying over their imaginary constitutional right to murder unborn children while demanding Kyle Rittenhouse get his head on a damn plane for defending himself from a five-time convicted pedo, or as they call him, a misunderstood beautiful martyr, like Mark Ruffalo has said, then you wonder why any time now you take a look at just the sheer sight of Margot Robbie or Jennifer Lawrence involved in any production or even seeing them on a magazine cover makes you want to fucking puke blood all over their face, while Henry Cavill, on the other hand, you see him involved in a production and automatically you're going to have a nice big smile on your face and fingers crossed that he's able to keep all the little Kathleen Kennedy wannabes out of there and completely make it work. While Amazon does have its miserable woke garbage like the rings of power that they live to glorify, while of course there's other stuff on there that is actually watched and actually well liked but that they don't nearly profile up all over the place as much like say The Terminalist or the recent revival of Kids in the Hall, well let's hope that now... We've got much bigger chances at hoping that a Henry Cavill starring and produced Warhammer series is going to be more like that Terminal List or Kids in the Hall variety of Amazon original programming and not that latest uh, garbage Rings of Power show or that Jordan Peele executive produced garbage about we are, we're a bunch of diversity checkboxes punching Nazis, even though the Nazis only exist either in your political party or hovering around in your empty little heads. And that's not my opinion. I know I'm right. I thank everyone for watching. Remember to subscribe if you are new. Check that you're still subscribed if you're a returning viewer. And to all my viewers out there, remember, since my channel isn't monetized for telling the truth, you're going to have to go and support my channel if you want to through my Square store. My store is the first link in the description below where you will find my pen and ink art for 25, my color art for 30, and my sketchbooks for 25. You can commission a color piece for 60, a pen and ink piece for 50, or a trading card for 20. And those are the last items you'll see in my color drawing categories, my illustration categories and the trading card is the last item in my posters category and those are large hand colored hand drawn posters for 200 apiece and whenever you buy in the store it only comes with a flat five dollar shipping fee whether you buy one thing or several things and beyond that you can also donate to my store. Donations are the first thing you see in the store. Any dollar amount from any denomination around the world is accepted. And remember, my store can't receive orders or commissions from foreign addresses. So for those foreigners out there, you would have to buy or commission art through a donation. Add up what you want in U.S. dollars and include another 25 U.S. for the international shipping fee. And your items will ship immediately. And I also have a Streamlabs, that's the second link in the description below, where you can go and donate there. So until then, I thank you all for watching, and remember felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.